Thank you for joining us. So today we'll do a class with a bit of chest openers and probably a little bit of baby back bends. If you've got either a blanket or a towel or a belt or a block, I'll show you a couple of things with those props. So um, if you don't have those, I'll always give you options and modifications. So let's begin. This is a nice lightweight cotton blanket, but it can be similar to what a towel might be. So the pose we're gonna go into with this, I'll show you both with this and with the blocks, is coming down, putting the bottoms of your shoulder blades here so that, and then if you can straighten the legs, if you're okay in the lower back, you can just have your arms out to the side like this. If you're feeling strain in the lower back, you can always have the feet on the floor, knees bent, and you can maybe roll the spine a little bit both ways or the other if you're having tension there. And then maybe after a while, you'll be able to straighten the legs. So there's two ways to straighten the legs. You can just have them relax like Shavasana. Or if you want a little more action, you can really extend through the feet and the heels. And then you can bring those big toes together. So just this part of the foot, the big toe mounds, that just demonstrates to you that they're together and gives you some evenness. So if this pose feels right for you, start that way. Now I'll show you the block option. And I've got these kind of big blocks and I have two of them. You may only have one, but again, this is where you could put the something over the blocks, but it's the same pose. It's just that you've got these two blocks here instead. And when I put the blocks here, I do want to activate my legs. So here I want to make sure I've got some length in my neck so that I don't scrunch up the back of my head. I get a little bit more stretch here through the side body. But if you like the lower option, do the rolled blanket. Another option, if you had two blocks, would be to have one between your shoulder blade and then one supporting the head. So you're still getting the lifted chest, but you don't have so much tension under the neck. So that's another option. I'm gonna go back to my head on the floor, but you can choose whichever pose works for you today and then see if you can really feel that space between the shoulder blade and that lengthening through the tips of the collarbones here into the tips of the shoulder so what i mean is right through here and then it rolls into that shoulder so if you can, sometimes it's useful to take a hand and just go over that collarbone and then wrap it around into the tip of the shoulder. Actually, that feels pretty good to me. It's like giving myself a little self massage. And then you can do the other side. So you can take that hand, go over that collarbone into the tip of the shoulder on the side just stay here for a few more breaths. And staying here for a little while means that your body will go become more accustomed to it. And you might be able to really feel 
how the breath is moving from the base. So from the lower lobes of the lungs, from the thigh sockets, all the way up through the side body into that upper chest. And really pressing through those feet if you are straightening the leg. then since I'm this way to release, I'm going to just lift my head up and then you can bring the feet back in with the knees bent and just take that block or that blanket or towel away and then just come back to lying on your mat and just notice how it feels. Maybe you feel a little more softness in the shoulder blades and again take the hand trace one hand over the collarbone to the tip of the shoulder and then slowly roll it to the hand just let the head follow with that and then slide the hand back up Feel into the side of the shoulder here. Glide it over the collarbone. Then bring the other hand up, going from that other side collarbone into the tips of the shoulder, rolling to that other hand. Letting the head just follow, so don't lift the head, and then come back into the center. And then we're gonna do, uh, it would be called reclining Guru Dasana Eagle Pose. So in my case, I'm gonna wrap my right leg around the left leg. And so you might need to move your foot either closer in or closer away. If you can't wrap it all the way around, just keep it on the side. And so this is my right leg over my left. Now I'm bringing the right arm under the left. And now we're in Guru Dasana. And then we're gonna bring the elbows and knees towards each other. If you have trouble in the neck, you can just leave the head on the floor or you can bring the, the head up. It's a bit of an abdominal pose. And then as you come down, just walk the feet a little away and bring the hands higher up. So this probably gives you a stretch in the side body, but also in the arms. And then inhale, bring the knees and the elbows towards each other. and then slowly bring it down and stretch the hands forward and you can stretch the feet away and then release that side and what's really useful about doing this on the floor is that your hips can be very even the whole back body is very even on the floor and so you won't be trying to shift your hips around to get the wrap. So now wrap the other leg around if you can. Sometimes you might need to bring the foot away from you or closer in to get that little wrap. And if not, don't worry about it. Just cross the legs over and just do the best you can. And then bring that left elbow under the right arm. And again, I forgot to give you the modification from the arms. You can just simply put the hands on the shoulders if that's the best, you know, that you can do. Or you can just have them a little bit wide or if you can bring the hands together, great. And so whatever level you're in, you're bringing the elbows and the knees towards each other. A couple of breaths here. Bring it down 
And you can lengthen the feet away and lengthen the arms overhead a bit. Stretching out that side body. And then one more, bringing the knees and the elbows towards each other. And then coming back down, long away. And then release the arms and the legs and just keep the feet bent. And then just take a couple of breaths and just notice what you notice. And then roll to your side. And we're gonna come onto our front body. And the first pose we're gonna do. So you're gonna tuck your toes under your legs to really lengthen right here into those thigh sockets. And then place the tops of the feet down. Then bring the elbows together best you can and start to walk them forward. And you can place your forehead on the forearms. And then your armpits are really going to the floor. Now you're not going to just release your body. You're gonna actually lengthen through those toe tips so that the front body's engaged as you press down and then bring those arms forward and just do a little circle to the side and we're going to keep the legs right now you know just like hip width and then just see if you can get a little bit of lift with the chest and the legs. Just feeling how that feels right now. And then slowly soften down, circle the arms around, and now tuck the toes under and the fingertips forward and see if you can get length here. through the arms and the legs. And maybe just rocking a little bit in the toe tips and feeling that length through the spine. And then again, bring the elbows together. If it was useful to tuck the toes under to lengthen the front thighs, you can do that and then place the tops of the feet down. Walk those elbows forward. Again, we're getting those armpits towards the floor. And then slowly circle the arms and just leave in the legs with a little bit of width. See if you can get the chest lifted and then bring it down and come back into tucking the toes under, fingers forward to get that length in the body. And you can do a little bit of rocking forward and back if you find that useful. And then place the tops of the feet down and then lift the opposite arm. So I'm lifting my right arm and left leg long and down. Left arm, right leg and down. Right arm, left leg down. Right arm, left arm, right leg down. And then circle the arms again and come up again. So you might feel you got a little bit more mobility now in that chest. And then bring the hands under your shoulders and come up 
into big toes together, knees wide. Finding that length in the side body and in the head, the tail. And then inhale, coming up. You might want to walk those hands forward and come into a downward facing dog. Couple of breaths there. And then go back down into big toes together, knees wide. Then inhale, coming up, bring the hands forward, tuck the toes under. And if you can, you can come up to your fingertips and bring the right leg forward, or you can use your hand to bring that leg forward. So we've got a little bit of a lunge here. And then we're gonna come up into warrior one. Anyway, in a downward dog, you can bring, come onto your fingertips and bring the right foot through or you can bring your hand and bring it through. And then coming up into Lunge Warrior or Warrior One. Now we're going to bring the right arm behind and hold it with the left hand to see if we can really lift that chest even a little bit more. Really using the abdominals here and then while you're there, see if you can clasp the hands and lift the arms up a little bit. And then see if you can come forward and get more stretch in the shoulders. And then release the hands down and come back into downward dog, but easiest way you can. And then on the other side, again, you can come up to your fingertips and swing the leg through, or you can use your hand to come through. And then we're coming up into the lunge warrior or warrior one. And this time it's the left arm behind you, really lifting the chest here. Then interlock the hands behind you. And coming forward, getting a bit of shoulder stretch. Bringing the hands down, coming back into downward dog and either staying here for a couple of breaths or going into Big toes together, knees wide. Whichever works for you right now. And then we'll bring that right foot forward again. The best way for you. And then we'll bring that back heel down so that we can come up into um, warrior two. But again, you're gonna hold the arm behind you. And, and what that does is it helps to remind the hip to stay underneath you. And then see if you can bring those fingers, interlock those fingers again. And this time you're going to try to go forward towards the side, letting go of the head, and then come back up. 
and then coming back around, release the arms down, back foot long, bring that foot behind you into a downward dog, and then bring the left foot between your hands. You can assist yourself with that other hand and drop the back heel so it's turned in. Coming up into warrior two and then holding that arm here for a few breaths. Like I said, this reminds this hip to go underneath, this sit bone to be underneath me. And then holding the Hand, fingers together, interlocking the fingers, and then coming forward or to the side. And then inhaling, coming up, pivoting the body around, release the arms, and come back into downward, or you can have a few breaths and big toes together, knees wide. Couple of breaths here. And then bringing the right foot forward again, back heel down. And then this time when you come up, you're gonna hold the fingers together and come into Pajvokanasana this way. So then you're leaning to the side but you're really using that power in the arms to keep that chest open. And then again, you'll pivot around, release the arms down, and bring the foot back into downward facing. Then bring the other foot between the hands, drop the back heel down. And then you'll come up, grasp the hands, come into pause, Vokanasana, really using the power in those arms. Keep the shoulder and the chest lifted. And then you'll pivot around, get a bit of stretch in those arms. Hands around, foot back, and then we'll all come into big toes together, knees wide. And if you'd like to, again, you can bring the elbows together, forehead on those forearms to get more stretch in those shoulders. And you can walk those elbows forward. Then again, come down to your mat. You can lengthen the legs again, stick cutting the toes under. Arms in front of you. And we're gonna lift the right leg, right arm, left leg, sorry. <laughs> Exhale down. Lift the left arm, right leg, head. Exhale down. Right arm, left leg. Exhale down. Left arm, right leg. Exhale down. Then circle the arms and come up into another locust pose. Just noticing where you are with your chest now. And coming down, hands under the shoulders, 
going into big toes together, knees wide. come up and if you've got the block or the blanket we're just gonna if you have the block you can put it between your heels and sit back or you can put it wide so that your sit bones are on it and bring your heels into it so it can be like that where you sit back like that or if you've got a blanket or a towel you can actually put it like so and sit on your heels this way so there's two ways to do it and for some reason that feels really nice to me tonight. So I'm gonna sit back on my heels on top of this blanket. And then we're just gonna do a couple of shoulder stretches to finish off. So we're gonna take the right elbow under the left again into Guru Dasana. Again, the modification is this. and really bring those abdominals back to the spine. And see if you can really press the shins into the floor. And then release the arms, bring in the left elbow under having the modifications or whatever modification you need. And then release the arms. And then we're gonna go into Gomukhasana arms. So we're gonna go into cow face pose arms. So I'm taking my left arm behind me, but you can take the right one but you want to use that. I'm using my right arm to really bring my left back of the hand as close as I can between the shoulder blades. It might be lower than that, but just see where you can go. You can actually take that hand and really, I probably should turn around, really hold on to that forearm and bring it around. set myself up again here so you bring that around just have a couple of breaths here then take the other hand in front and again you're tracing that collarbone to the tips of the shoulder to wrap that around you might get a little bit more motion and then inhale the arm up and then bring it behind. You might not find the fingers, but just keep the neck long and the elbow pointed up. And then release the arms. Just place them on your thighs for a second. And then take the other hand arm behind you using the other one to hold on to that forearm. Maybe you even get the elbow. Maybe you help the wrist and the hand come up between the shoulder blades. So you start with that for a few breaths and don't pitch your rib cage out like I am. Bring the belly back and then you take that front arm I mean the other arm and bring it back front just go over that collarbone 
out to the tips of the shoulders. It's kind of nice, it's almost a massage. And really, you know, you could stay here for a while and just give yourself a little bit of pressure on the arm, especially if you, you've got one that's um, stiffer than the other or just needs a little more tender loving care. And then inhale that arm up, finding, maybe you don't find the fingers, just lift that elbow up, bring the abdominals back, don't stick the rib cage forward. And then slowly release the arms. Maybe you just need a little bit of softening in the head and the neck. And then come down to whatever shavasana or feet up the wall or feet in a chair that feels right for you today. Whatever pose you've chosen, let your body settle into that pose. Whatever part of your body is on the floor, see if you can feel the weight. Just release into gravity softening into the floor, feeling the softness of the mat and the floor. And then check in with the space between the shoulder blades, just notice what's going on there. Did anything we do have an impact on this area? And what about your collarbone notches? Your collarbone? and the tips of your shoulders. Just notice that space. That space in the fronts of the shoulders where the collarbones really widen out. And then what about your chest? you feel the breath moving freely in your chest or not? Just notice, don't judge it. Be kind to yourself. And then can you soften your forehead? Soften your temples. What about the space between your eyebrows? Can you feel your eyeballs soften in your eye socket? What about your cheeks? Can you feel your cheeks soften? Space between your ears soften. jaw softening. And your lips, teeth, and tongue soften. And your chin is softening.
and then slowly begin to reawaken your body bringing a bit of stretch into your fingers toes take a nice long stretch and then slowly come up to sitting Can you be kind to yourself today? Just notice when you are judging yourself or criticizing yourself. Can you just stop that for a second and find some words of kindness? Have a beautiful day or evening wherever you are in the world. And namaste.
watching and joining us. Namaste.